okay. af after the the, the 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 super far super eagles exit in the afcon how was the feeling like in nigeria yeah uh, well, it was a it was a very disappointing outing for Nigeria. Uh, we never expected that we were going to be knocked out so early, most especially considering what we did in the group stage of this tournament. You know, the Super Eagles were the best team in the group stage of this uh, African Cup of Nations. So we were hopeful that um, Tunisians cannot stop us, most especially when you consider the performance of Tunisia in the group stage of of this African Cup of Nations. Uh, but of course, unfortunately for Nigeria, we were sent back in 1-0 loss against the Cartage Eagles. Nigerians felt so bad back here in Nigeria. Even for those of us that were in Cameroon for the AFCON, we felt so bad. It's something that happened that we never foresaw. It was a very disappointing night for Nigeria. We never felt it would be so early for us to be eliminated. What, what were, were some of the reactions from the, 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 the fans of the Nigerians? Reactions? Uh, what... Niger what they were, dis they were disappointed. <laughs> they were disappointed. But I'm not to waste about it, Dennis. Nigerians were disappointed uh, because of, uh, just like I said earlier, because of the performance in the group stage, they, the boys gave us hopes that they can go all the way. Don't forget at the end of the group stage, people were already talking about Nigeria being a potential champions at the end of the African Cup of Nations. So we were so disappointed in Nigeria that we could not go beyond the run of 16. And of course, we've learned some valuable lessons. Overall, Nigerians were disappointed with the outcome in AFCON. The, the Nigerians were expecting the trophy in Nigeria, right? Salt, 95.9. Can you say that again? They were expecting the trophy in Nigeria. Yes, of course. Uh, it's, it was looking like that after the group stage performance. Um, we were the best team in the group stage, no doubt about that. Uh, so the way the boys played in the group stage, there were hopes. There were hopes that we could go all the way, not to be eliminated in the round of 16. So it was very unfortunate. It was very unfortunate. Nigerians expected more than what the Super Eagles gave in Cameroon at the AFCON. Were, were, were they talking about uh, Augustine Ogovon as the coach uh, to, to be, were they talking about his tactics, they want him to be eliminated from his position or what? Or he's still in charge? Augustine Ogovon is still in well, charge. Well, Yes, Austin Gavin is still in charge of these uh, Super Eagles. They're still very much in charge of this national team. Although there were calls for him to be fired after the game against Tunisia because of the um, what we felt it was a lack of uh, option B, a plan B in the tactics against the Cartage Eagles. Um, Nigeria were, Super Eagles was easily predictable. Uh, the Tunisians had a perfect game plan against us, which they executed. So uh, in terms of fact, tactics, they were better than us. And that was the reason why some Nigerians felt tactically Austin Ogovon cannot take us to the El Dorado of our football. But on the second thought, when some Nigerians were thinking that uh, Eguavon was not good, or let me say it's not good enough for us, some people said that he had little time to prepare for AFCON. He did not assemble the players. It was not Austin Eguavon that assembled the players. He had little time with the boys, and people felt if he's been given enough time to deal with his boys, he could have performed better. So overall, um, the sports ministry in Nigeria, in conjunction with the presidency, uh, told the NFF to make sure that Austin Eguavon will continue to be in charge of Eagles. And to help him tactically, one of his former teammates, Emmanuel Amonike, has been told to join him in the backroom staff. Salt, now, Amonike is, Amonike is joining uh, Augustine Oguavon. Oh, yes, for, confirmed. For, for the playoff? For the playoffs, yes. For the playoffs, uh, Emmanuel Amonike will be joining Austin Oguavon and Sire Salis Yusuf and Joseph Yubo. Those are the four guys that will be in charge of the Super Eagles against Ghana. Okay, uh, but you are for Nigeria and you in the update. And the team is a technical team. No, as I'm young, we say, as I'm before up here, we are. You bet you didn't say, every bro, for your best sign at you. Uh, Kenny, let me just go back. You are a journalist, okay? To, to, to you, will you, sec will you second that opinion that Augustine O'Gavon had a few days to prepare for the AFCON? Yes, I agree. I agree on represents. Uh, don't forget, we fired our former coach uh, just a few days to the start of the African Cup of Nations. And um, uh, the time was too short for us in the government to prepare uh, for the AFCON. It was too short. So, um, in terms of uh, Austin the government being in charge of this team, I agree on represents that Austin the government did not have enough time 
to work with the players. And don't forget, like I said earlier, Austin Egevon was not the one that submitted the names of the players to CAF for the African Cup of Nations. He made one or two additions, but 95% of the scores in Cameroon for us were not the players uh, from Austin Egevon list. It was Gennett Rowe that submitted the list before he was fired. So I agree 100% that Austin Egevon did not have enough time to prepare for the national team for the African Cup of Nations. Okay. Uh, away from the AFCON, let's go straight to the playoff. And how was the reaction from, okay. from how was the reaction from the Nigerians after hearing that they will be playing the Black Stars of Ghana uh, in the playoff? <laughs> Kenny, why are you laughing? Uh, I can tell you, I, I can tell you, my friend, it's it's a, it's also a mixed reaction, mixed reaction because number one, if you look at how Ghana played at the African Cup of Nations, see, let me tell you, Dennis, when, when the playoffs, if the playoff was played immediately after Afcon. Judging by the performance of the two teams, I would have beat my chest confidently that we are going to beat Ghana. If that game was played <laughs> immediately after AFCON, immediately after AFCON, you guys were poor. You guys were poor in Cameroon. Yeah, Nigeria yeah, was yeah. still good in Cameroon. Yes. So if the game was played immediately after AFCON, I would have said that Super Eagles have got a strong chance to edge the Ghanaians. But it's been it's been days after the AFCON, it's been weeks after AFCON. Ghana have a new set of technical crew. Super Eagles have a new set of technical crew right now. It's a different ball game, I can tell you. And we are we, we are aware of the rivalry between Nigeria and Ghana. At any level, Nigeria versus Ghana is always a cracker. Look at what our ladies, Super Falcons, look at what they did to Black Wings. So we are hopeful that when it comes to football this is the time again to teach you guys a football lesson nigeria to beat ghana <laughs> nigeria to beat ghana uh, you you had the opportunity by the grace by the grace of god no no by the grace of god ghana will beat nigeria <laughs> in that grace of god or not we are going to decide this game over two legs want, first leg in ghana you, you want, second leg in abuja you want, may the best thing win kenny you want to be in qatar i also want to be in qatar so who goes I, I was at the I was at the last I was at the last World Cup in Russia. You guys were not there, <laughs> so I want to go to Qatar once again for Super Eagles. You guys cannot stop us by the grace of God. You've, you've been to Russia, so let me go to Qatar. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's why I said let it, let the best team win. Let's have the best representation. Let Africa have the best team representing us in Af at the World Cup. If it is Nigeria that is good over the two legs, let's qualify. If it is Ghana that is better over the two legs, okay. let Ghana qualify. I am much more concerned about having a big representation uh, for the African continent in Qatar later this year. We just want we just want to have an in depth information. Uh, from Nigeria, uh, how prepared okay. is the Super Eagles? Information going around in Nigeria, how you guys are point for this particular playoff and that stuff. Uh, let me tell you, Dennis, you guys should be scared. When I say you guys should be scared, I know what I'm you, talking no, about. Kenny, Kenny, do you we want, went to the, hello, Kenny. Do you, do you want to? Yes. Do you want to cause fear and panic to Ghanaians? <laughs> let me tell you let me tell you what is happening in nigeria let me tell you what is happening here in nigeria see when i said you guys should be scared of nigeria i know what i'm talking about we have a new set of technical crew austin Egwavon plus emmanuel amoriki um that one is certain for now if you look at our players then we came to afcon without our number nine striker victor Osime our first number one striker. He didn't come with us. Victor Simba was not part of the team in Cameroon. We didn't come to AFCON with another one of our midfielders, Ogena Karo Etebo. We didn't come to AFCON with Leon Balogun. Now all these guys are back for Nigeria. We have Ademola Lukman. The FIFA just uh, uh, confirmed his allegiance I, to Nigeria. I, I, I was, Ademola Lukman is coming. I was about, Audio Nigalo is coming. I, I was about to ask you Lukman. Now, okay. is that Ademola Lukman is coming is for that, sure. Is that Ademola Lukman is coming for sure. It's a done deal. Our players are. It's a done deal. Ademola Lukman coming to Nigeria is a done deal. He will come to Ghana to play against you. Huh? He's coming. He will be invited. He will be invited. So, if you look at all of these players, if you look at the, our performance in Cameroon, plus these guys that are coming to join us Victor Osime, Ogena Karuetebo, Ademola Lukman, Leon Balogo. We have a strong team coming to Ghana to play you guys. You guys should be scared of us. 
That's the bottom line. You guys should be afraid of Nigeria. It's not going to be easy against us. Hey, Kenny. Are you are you are you not yeah. talking, are you not bragging? Am I not what? Are you not bragging? You are just putting fear on the on Ghana. It, 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 it's it's no it, it's it's not bragging. I have so much respect for Ghana. I said this earlier. Any game involving Nigeria versus Ghana is only so tough not to crack. Nigeria Ghana at any competition under seventeen, under twenty, under twenty one national team, men and women football, anything Nigeria Ghana. You know it's always it's always fire for fire. So I, I am aware of the rivalry between us. See, I know if every country, if Ghana is losing against every other countries, when it's the turn of Nigeria, they will never want Nigeria to beat them because of the rivalry between us. I understand all of that. I'm only telling you about the strength of the Super Eagles right now. Our boys are scoring just yesterday in the UEFA Conference League. Undi, they got an assist. Kelechi Yanacho got an assist yesterday night. So look at Kevin Bassi in the Rangers in Scotland. He got an assist yesterday in the UEFA Europa League. Our players are very good in form right now, and they can't just wait for this game against Ghana and come the 26th of March. Kenny, uh, after the, the the Afcon, how would you how would you Nigerians assess uh, the performance of uh, Milovan Rajavac? And were you surprised when you heard the sack of Milovan Rajavac? No, we were not surprised. I mean, that's just the beauty of the game. A coach is as good as the last job. Uh, judging by the performance at the African Cup of Nations, it was just a normal thing for the coach to be fired. Ghana, Ghana was poor in Cameroon. That team was so poor in Cameroon. And just like I said earlier, a coach is always as good as the last game. With the last games um, Radjavak played, it was enough for him to be fired. So we were not surprised that he was fired. What, what were some of the problems that you 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 saw with with regards to the black stars what are some of the problems that you saw with regards to the black stars the, the, the first thing you see, you see, you see Dennis, we, we were both in cameroon for the afcon we were both in cameroon yes. for the afcon that was what we met that was what we met, we met the first thing i noticed Kawa. from the the, the, the the first thing i noticed concerning black stars of ghana is lack of discipline on the part of the players Seriously? lack of discipline I think I think I think I think Ghana is I think Ghana is gifted. Ghana has fantastic players scattered all over the world football. But I think discipline has been the major problem of the black stars of Ghana. With due respect to all the players, I think it is lack of discipline that has been the big uh, problem facing this team. And I think the appointment of Chris Oakteen definitely uh, as a foreign coach. As a foreign coach, a former coach of Brighton and over beyond, a big name in world football, I think Chris Oakton is good enough to bring discipline back to the Black Stars. If he can achieve that, this Ghana will fly once again. The stars will shine again. Aside the discipline issue you're talking about, on the foot of play, are we are we are we having the, the, the materials that can deliver on the foot of play? Aside the discipline aspect. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is not in my place to dissect if you have a team or not. I think it's the work of the technical crew. But that team, but that team in Ghana, let me tell you, Dennis, that team in Ghana, that team I saw in Ghana cannot beat Nigeria over two legs. That, that team you saw. If you are going to, if, if you if you are going to play Nigeria, the those boys in Ghana in Cameroon at the Afcon, you cannot beat us. You stand no chance against Nigeria. We do respect to the players. We do respect to them. They stand no chance against Kenny, us. Kenny, we all know that the performance there was not good. But why are you saying that? Yeah. I'm saying that because you guys were poor. The three games you guys played, you were poor. It was, everybody saw it. You guys were poor. So there's, there's no room for... So, so that's what... So Kenny, you, you don't so think there's a room for improvement? Or there's no room for improvement? That's what... Of course, you have a new coach. You have a new coach now. I'm very sure the new coach listen, will reject the team. Listen, now we have Otoado. Otoado as the head coach. Oh, uh, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic coach, Otoado. Fantastic. George Boateng, fantastic player yes. at Middlesbrough. Yes. Now as a coach, fantastic, George Boateng. I, I, I like the fact that Ghanaian Football Association have decided to trust these guys. I know they will bring a lot in terms of experience, in terms of motivation, in terms of discipline to this squad. I know they will bring that into this Ghana squad, but something must be done. That team must be better than what we saw in Cameroon. 
the Ghana team must be better. Kenny, how would you ask? How would you assess the big names? The big names that we sent to Cameroon. Uh, uh, setting the day are you? Sorry, I didn't get that. Can you say that again? How would you assess some few players that we sent to Cameroon? Talk of Thomas Te Pate uh, and uh, the day are you and uh, Jordan are you? How would you assess the three players? <laughs> So, 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 let me let me let me say this. Let me say this. I, I'm going to be very frank with you. I have so much respect for the Ayub brothers. Uh, one of them just won the Qatari League. Uh, I think the elder brother. Um, the, 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 I mean, the, 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 he just won. The, he just won the league in Qatar right now. I have a lot of respect for them for everything they've done to Ghanaian football. But someone like Jordan Ayub, how many goals has Jordan Ayub scored in the last one year? I stand to be corrected. How many goals has he scored for Ghana? How many goals has he scored for Crystal Palace in the last one year? It's, it's, not, a, it's, it's not a consistent goal scorer. And if a player like that is leading the line for Ghana, if someone like that is leading the line for Ghana, it costs me a lot of concern. I have respect for him. Fantastic talent. But I think you guys can do better. I don't know if there should be competition in the squad. I don't know if chances should be given to other players. I think someone like Jordan Ayu should not be starting games week in, week out. Should not be starting games for Ghana. He is the, the, the figures, the figures are there. The figures are there for Jordan Ayu. He should not be leading the line for Ghana if you guys are very serious about going to the World Cup. Serious. Kenny, I really love your discussion this particular afternoon. Your interview, we are learning a lot from your interview. If you want to go places, we shouldn't use Thank you. Jo jo Thank you. Jordan Ayu. We shouldn't start him in our matches. Jordan, are you? Because because of the figures, the number one the number one responsibility of a striker is to score goals. Yes. If Jordan has not scored twenty goals in the last one year, it's not proven. He's not a proven goal scorer. I don't know why a big country like Ghana, with the array of talent you guys have, you will you will rely on Jordan Ayu to score goals for you. How many goals has he scored in the last one year? How many goals? Even even you 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 the Nigerian, you Nigerians you are you, you are disappointed in us. Jordan Ayu is not a threat. He's not a threat. If if Jordan Ayu will lead your attack against Nigeria, we are not afraid. We should not be afraid of Jordan. We should not. Okay, uh, Kenny, when 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 are you guys going to open your camp ahead of the playoff? Well, um, NFF, they've not said anything about that, but I can tell you that the camp will be open in Abuja. Um, Abuja will host the Eagles, second leg. The dates of uh, the resumption has not been declared yet, has not been said by the NFF. But, but I'm very sure in the next couple of weeks, or let me say the next couple of days, we are almost in March already. In the next couple of days, we should have uh the exact date these players will be coming around the players you, you know our super egos coaches they were in europe a couple of days ago austin and um um they were in, in england they were in belgium speaking with nigerian players telling them about the importance of the game against ghana our boys are getting ready for you you guys should be you guys should just watch out we are coming for you guys we are also waiting for you guys salt 95 definitely we see <laughs> in the Cape coast very soon <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, Kenny, I don't know what to say again. But finally, yeah. before, <laughs> finally, before you go, uh, what what is your your final message to Ghanaians? Because I learned you said you are going to score. You are going to score both the two legs. You are coming to Ghana to score. You will be you you go back home uh, to prepare and score Ghana back to back, straight up to World Cup. We let, me, let me let me let me let me say this. As a Nigerian, as a Nigerian journalist, I have a lot of respect for Ghana and what you've done for African football. I appreciate all of that. I, I know the culture in Ghana. I know everything concerning Ghanaian football. With so much respect for you guys, you guys are doing a lot, but it can be better. I understand the game in Ghana will be, is going to be difficult for us, most especially the venue of the game in Cape Coast. I know you guys have an outstanding record on beat in your last five games in Cape Coast. I know that for sure that it's going to be difficult for Nigeria. But I'm only saying that over the two legs, in Cape Coast and of course in Abuja, I think we have a better team to qualify for the World Cup. That being said, I want to assure all Ghanaians that it's going to be a friendly affair between the two nations, Nigeria versus Ghana. We are like brothers. If Ghana qualifies for the World Cup, 
we are happy. If it is Nigeria, let's say for Nigeria, the overall ambition is to make sure Africa is well represented in Qatar later this year. May the best team win this encounter. You are not going to Qatar this year. I tell you, Kenny. You are not God. You are, you are not God. Dennis, you are not God. <laughs> Only God can say that. You are not God. <laughs> <laughs> You were at the last World Cup in Russia, so <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys, you guys should start preparing for Afghan qualifier next Afghan qualifier next year in uh, Ivory Coast. What? You, you know, you have to be the new team. You have you have to be the new team so you can use the qualifier to prepare for the next Afghan. Let Nigeria go to World Cup. We have a good team already. Let's go to the World Cup and let's meet again in Ivory Coast next year. African Cup of Nations. All the best to Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, Kenny, we really appreciate your, your time this afternoon. South 95 FM. Thank you. Yeah, really Thank you for appreciate Thank you for having me. We'll talk to you some other time. In regards to the Ghanaians. All right, all right. No problem, no problem. Dennis. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye bye. I was here for your brother for your baby. I didn't know that.